Hello and welcome back to another video in our Metrical tutorial. My name is Alex and today I'm going to be walking you through our user permissions as well as our approval system. This is going to greatly help your workflows and your team and client communication. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So let's get into the approval system and the role permissions. Before I start any demoing, I do want to point out that our approval system is only available for our advanced and enterprise plans. So there will be a code at the end of this video and in the description box below if you would like to try either of these plans so that you can test and see if the approval system is something that you would like to incorporate into your workflow. So let's go ahead and get on into it. You're gonna, for the first thing you're going to wanna do is you're going to want to establish your differing user permissions. So you're gonna go up here to this three line menu, click into that and click into user management. When you click into this page, you're gonna see that there are two panes. There is users and there is roles and permissions. On users, you will have all of your users listed. Now this is gonna look different for everyone. If you have multiple clients, if you have multiple team members, this will vary, and you'll see here that within that list, you'll be able to see their name, their email, what brands they're associated with, as well as a trash can, so you can go ahead and delete them if you don't necessarily want that user anymore. Again, super customizable. You also have the ability to add a user, so you can just put in their email and add them. You also can search within this page, which is really nice. So let's say I wanted to search for my coworker, Aniston. She pops up here. If I click into her page, I can see what brands she has access to as well as what position she has for those brands. So here you can see she has access to both Metrical accounts and she has manager permissions for those accounts. If you actually hover in and you hover over the different clients, you can see what each role allows and you just have to hover over them. So this is really nice, especially if you are adding a user to the account on this page, you can just go ahead and see what role would work best for them. So that you can do all within this page once you click into the actual user. Then if we go on over into roles and permissions, you'll see here that the roles will be listed again. So we have five preset roles. These are client, content creator, analyst, editor, and manager. Now, although these are preset, we have the ability to add, you know, specific user roles within the accounts as well. And this is just so that you have complete access as to who has what permissions for specific parts of your entire Metrical account. So as you can see here, if I click into, let's say content creator, I have one user. If I click into that, I can see what the role is. I can add a description if I wanted to. I can even change the role color coding for it. And then if I scroll down, I'll be able to see what permissions this role has. You can, of course, modify the preset rules or you can just create your own. But as you can see, the content creator role pretty much has permission to do just about everything besides management permissions, scheduling and publishing posts, and reviewing posts. So again, Customize this to your liking. If you are a manager of the account, you will be able to add those roles in and toggle on and off what you would like each person to be able to do. So if you were to click into all of these, you can see the difference between analyst, editor, and then of course manager is gonna have all of those permissions. If you wanted to create your own customized role, it's gonna look like the exact same page, just you can assign a role name and then toggle on whatever features you like. So let's say, for example, you really only wanted one person to be able to handle the messages and the comments and the engagement, you can just give them inbox privileges. So these are really nice to just have preset ones if that is what you're looking for, or if you are looking to go a little bit more in depth, you can go ahead and add your own rule. If you click into this right here as well, you'll see here that we have a nice breakdown of what the preset rules can do. And they're just de designated by this check mark on what they can and can't do. Okay, now I am back in the planner because now we can get started talking about the approval system. I am going to demo both sides. So this is going to be the side of, let's say if you're a content creator and you need to send your post for approval to a manager or to a client. 
So I will show you how to send posts for approval. It's very simple. So within the planner, you're going to want to click into your posts that you've already created or your new post. I'm just going to create a new post for the purpose of the demo. So here I'm going to create a new, let's say a new X post. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. So I'm going to put happy December. What are you looking forward to the most this month? Okay. And let's say, for example, I wanted to add a gift of, let's say the holidays. Holiday. So I wanted to add this. Now, this is a very simple post, but of course, if you're going to send posts for approval, they probably will be a little bit more involved. But again, I'm just using this for the actual demo. So let's say everything was good. I was happy with my post. I just want it to go to X. But if I wanted to send it to, you know, to Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, I could toggle all that on and modify as I please. But for this example, we are just doing a simple post to X. Now, if I think everything looks good, I've picked the date and time I want to schedule this out to, you're going to see here that we have a couple of different options. Now, I currently only have a manager permission on this account, but this would look different depending on the client role. So let's say, for example, I was a content creator, then I would need to send this post to review. So you'd want to put send to review, check everything is good, and then send it off. Okay, so once the select reviewers box comes up, you're going to want to click on the user that you want to send the post to. So if I were to remove Robert's name, you could see all the list of users. Again, this is going to look different for everyone, depending on how many users they have associated with the account. But let's say I know I want to send it to Robert. So I want to send it to Robert. And now I have three options to publish this post. I can either do no reviewer approval required, at least one reviewer must approve it, or all reviewers must approve it. So I'm going to go through the three different examples. So for no reviewer approval required, an example of this would be, let's say you have a client that likes to see the post, but they don't necessarily have to approve or deny every single thing. So you could click on this option, and then if they have something to say, then of course they can look at it and leave a note for you, but it's not necessary that it, someone has to see it before it goes out. So that would be an option to choose the no reviewer approval required. For at least one reviewer must approve it, this would be in the case of, let's say you have a team of people and you really just need one person to approve it, then you could send it to multiple people and whoever gets to it first, if they approve the post, then it'll be all good to go and scheduled and not everyone needs to look at it. Now, if you click on all reviewers must approve it, then that means that every single person that this post is sent to must click approve in order for the post to be scheduled out in the planner. For this example, I'm just going to do at least one reviewer must approve it and click on send. So you'll see that that post has been sent. And then if you go into your planner, you'll see here, if you hover over that post, it'll say pending of approval. So once the user approves it, that pending of approval will change to just say approved or approval. Now, if we are working on the flip side and you are the person who is approving posts, we also make this super easy. So you're going to go back up into that top right menu and you'll see here I already have a little notification button. Click into that and you're going to see in your My Tasks, this is where your approval posts will be located. So I can see based off of that notification that first I have a notification in general and then next to My Tasks, I see that I have four posts to review. So I'm going to click into My Tasks. And then you'll see here that there are a couple different options. So you have your open, your pending of approval, any posts that you've rejected, and posts that you've approved. So more than likely, you'll always be working in the open or the pending of approval, but this is up to you. So if I go into my open, you'll see here I have four posts that I need to look at. Um, so if we make it super easy to do this, you'll see here the status, it's all pending, the brand it's going to, and you can also easily hit approve or reject from this page. More than likely, you're not going to want to do that, but let's say, for example, I clicked into this post, it's going to show you the complete configuration of how the post is going to look. So you'll see the caption, the photo, if there's any other details, and you can toggle between what platforms it's going to go out on. So let's say this looks perfect. I have absolutely no edits, then you can easily go ahead and click approve. If you click approve, it's going to disappear from your My Tasks list. And then if we go back to the planner and we actually look at that post within there, you'll see that that now says approved. So I just approved this post. 
See, it says pending because it still needs to obviously be scheduled out, like go out to be published. But now it says approved up here. So that would be the difference. Instead of pending of approval, this will now say approved. So let's go back into my tasks. And as you can see, that has updated because now I only have three. Now let's say, for example, we were looking at the configuration of this post and let's say that there's a mistake or maybe you want to update some information if you're a client and you want to provide some more detail or if you're a team member and you want to maybe move the post around or change some things, you can reject the post. And so you, the first thing you would do is you would click on reject. If you click on reject, we're going to give you the option to add a note to the post. This is super efficient and helpful because, of course, you don't want to just reject the post without any context. So this is where you have the ability to make any corrections or just let your team member or client know what it is that maybe isn't, you know, working or needs to be fixed. So this would be more than likely a client letting a team member know or another team member letting another team member know. So you could go ahead and put a note here. Let's just say there was an error. You would type that in and then you would hit save note and then that post would be rejected and it would go back to the user that sent it to you and then they would make those corrections and they can either send the post back for approval again or if that's not something that's necessary for your workflow, then they could, you know, schedule it out. But again, this is completely dependent on how you set up your user permissions. You can also, if let's say, for example, if you just want to reject it, but you don't necessarily have a note to add, you can just hit reject without note. So I'm going to go ahead and reject that just, just to reject it um, and show you what happens. So now if I go into the planning and I go look at that post, which was here, you can see here that that has been updated to rejected and they will get that notification back into their my tasks to review that note or why that post was rejected. Another thing I would like to mention is that any time that you send a post for approval, not only will it appear in their my tasks, but they will also receive an email so that they also know via email that there are posts to be approved. So let's say I'm happy with all of these. I can click approve, approve. And now that I have approved those posts, I don't have any open tasks. I go back into the planner and I can look and see what I have approved. So I approve this post. I rejected this post. I approve this post. And it makes it really easy to see where the posts are within the workflow. And as soon as that's empty, you'll see I no longer have that notification for my tasks. And then, like I said before, I don't have any more open tasks, but I can see the three posts that I just approved, which is really nice. And this is basically the gist of the approval system. It's very easy to use. And the fact that you can customize those user roles to the preference of your team and your clients and makes it efficient for your workflows so that you can improve the communication, you can lessen errors, you can have second set of eyes on your post. This is very great for anyone who works on a team or who works with multiple clients. And we highly recommend that you check it out on the advanced or the enterprise plans. And that's how you use our approval system and our role permissions. Hopefully this is a good stepping stone so you can get used to approving posts and sending posts for approvals as well. Don't forget to use the code TRY FREE. This is going to give you 30 days free of any of our Metrical Premium plans. I highly suggest using it for an advanced or enterprise plan. That way you can try out the approval system and the different role permissions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,